Welcome, I'm Ryan Holger with TEC and I have with me Sal Stangerone. Uh, Sal is going to be helping us with uh, the ductless mini split lines that we have. Uh, he's gonna go through the different types of products that we have, proper applications for each, um, some tips and tricks on different things that different models can do and other ones can't do kind of thing. So uh, with that, I'm gonna turn everything over to Sal. If you guys have any questions as he's going through, just type them in the uh, question chat box down there and I will rudely interrupt him and ask the questions. It's all you. Cool. Said. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, thank you, everyone, for taking the time out to listen to me today. Um, we will have plenty of time for questions. Uh, not a super long PowerPoint we're going to be going through today. So feel free to ask as many as you want. Um, so again, I'm Sal Singeroni from TEC. I work um, with a lot of our products that we sell, um, but like Ryan said, we're going to be talking about ductless and a little bit about VRF today. So, get this going. Okay, so um, before we get into the details here, um, if anyone has heard what the market numbers for HVAC were supposed to be before the coronavirus happened, um, residentially speaking, with furnaces and split systems. Um, the projections were for 2020 to be either flat or down four to five percent. However, the projections for ductless mini splits and VRF was projected to be up 18 percent. So if you're not involved with ductless mini splits, um, you should be. There is a market for it and it has been and is expanding, um, whether it's through installation, design, sales, any aspect of it, there is money to be made with this product. Um, so why should you choose carrier ductless? Um, there are a number of reasons. We have an actual form that shows 42 reasons, um, but these are the top 10 that we're going to cover today. Uh, the product line, as you'll see, there's a lot of different options. Um, it's very built up and very applicable. Um, with our carrier ductless product line, we have the most efficient air conditioner in the market. One of our high wall ductless systems has a rating of 42 SEER. There is nothing that is more efficient than that product. Um, we do have the ability to, to tie in to Wi-Fi with all of our tiers of products um, through an app, which we'll talk about. Um, in our market in Chicago, um, when you're running with a heat pump, having a base pan heater is essentially a requirement for your outdoor unit, and that is a standard option on all of our outdoor units. There are some manufacturers where that built-in that base pan heater is an accessory that requires some installation and cost. No installation is required. It comes standard out of the box on our units. The biggest thing I would take away from this presentation with Carrier Duckless is our performance and our performance based on outdoor air. Uh, one of the biggest hurdles we have in the Chicagoland market is with Duckless and Inverter product is if we can heat and cool when it's very cold outside. Okay. Um, all of the carrier product will never, it has no outdoor air lockout for operation. Okay, so there's no set outdoor temperature that below that temperature, the unit will just shut down and not run. However, as the temperature drops, the performance is going to derate. Okay, so we have the ability to give you the ratings of our equipment, tell you the exact performance you're going to get all the way down to minus 22 degrees, okay? Now below that, the equipment's still gonna try to run, we just can't tell you the exact performance you're gonna get out of it, okay? So you don't have to worry about when it, the polar vortex hits your unit not functioning, it's still gonna function and we can tell you approximately what performance you're gonna get out of it, out of it and the exact performance down to minus 22 degrees. Um, the inter-tier model com compatibility we'll talk about with our multi-zone, which is a very cool feature. The humidity and occupancy sensors we will talk about as well. Um, all of our ductless product under five tons, you do not need a branch selector box. Okay, so everything can be tied back with refrigerant pipe and wiring to the outdoor unit. You don't need to take up more space within the home or location that you're installing the system. And finally, we do have single phase VRF equipment and that VRF equipment is heat recovery in single phase which we'll talk about towards the end of the presentation. Okay so jumping into the product the infinity high tier single zone system 
This is our around the market up to 42 sear. It is only available on high wall. There are four sizes, the 9, 12, 18, and 24. Heating and cooling capacity is down to minus 22. The heating output at minus 22 is 75% of rated. So at 12 ton, sorry, at one ton, the 12,000 is going to only give you 9,000 at minus 22 degrees outdoor air. However, on the cooling side, you will get 100%. So this is a great unit for a server room. You have full operation in cooling mode down to minus 22 degrees. Another feature that's good for server rooms is you have a relative humidity sensor, which we will talk about how that works and what options you have with that um, in the next slide. And then finally, there's built-in Wi-Fi standard on this unit, and there's an occupancy sensor, which we'll talk about in a little bit as well. Again, only available on the high wall. This is your highest tier, most efficient air conditioner. The relative humidity sensor. So this is standard on the unit. If, if none of you are familiar with dry mode, dry mode is the sequence of operation that's common on most residential cooling systems. Um, and essentially what it does is it allows you to overcool the space to a limit to try to wring out some humidity from that space. Um, this system takes that one step further because it actually monitors the humidity in the space. So you can tell the exact humidity that you have and it will actually control to a humidity set point. So I can tell it I want it to be 55% relative humidity in my space. If my temperature satisfies on cooling, it will try to cool to dehumidify or operate in dry mode to drive that humidity down to 55%. If it satisfies that 55% first, great, it will go out of dry mode. However, there is a backup built in as well that says if I overshoot my space temperature set point, trying to take the humidity out, I will stop that dry mode and go back to normal control. So you're never going to sacrifice any space temperature with this operation. It's just a little bit better feature than your standard dry mode. And you do have the, abil the ability to actually monitor the humidity in the space. And you can see that via Wi-Fi, um, which is very nice. So the occupancy sensor. Next feature called the intelligent eye. You can see it. If you guys can see my cursor, it's this little circle at the bottom of the unit. This is an infrared and motion sensor. Okay. And so if you're worried about, hey, I want to put this in my master bedroom and I'm sleeping and not moving, it's still going to detect your heat signature. It's still going to know that you're there. This sensor can do three things for you. First is it can tell you if it should control to your occupied space temperature step point or not, right? Very basic, like an occupancy sensor. Second feature is it can actually tell you, you can actually direct the airflow at you or away from you based on your preference. So if you're someone who, when they're cold, they want to feel the hot air on your back, um, you can choose shoot the air at me. If you don't want to feel that push of air, you can have it directed away from you, heat up the room, and eventually get you heat or cool it. Thirdly, you have the ability to increase the amount of air that's delivered based on how many people are there. So all of those settings are programmable from the wireless remote. Um, simple button operation that you can use. Um, so very nice features on this high-end unit. This option is only available on the Infinity High tier and it's not an accessory for anything else. It's only factor installed on this unit. The Wi-Fi option that is standard on this unit, um, very easy to use. You can you see there's a little barcode on the USB um, that you can scan, set up, connect it to your wireless router, and there is a separate app that you can connect to your unit where you can adjust the set point, adjust the mode, adjust the fan, monitor the humidity, um, very easy to use. It is different than the Infinity Residential Furnace app. Um, this is a ductless app that is used for monitoring the Wi-Fi. This is standard on the Infinity tier. You'll see it's an option on the other tiers as well. Hey Sal, we have a question. Yes. Um, this Infinity unit, is it also available in a Bryant Evolution version? Okay, good question. So um, 
the carrier Bryant and Mydea brands of the products are all the same product. So the product that we're stocking does not have a brand label on it, essentially just the ductless unit. Um, however, if you want a Bryant branded or carrier branded or Mydea branded, you have that option. All of the features are identical through all three brands. But the branding would just be changing on the outdoor unit. The indoor unit, what would that say? The indoor unit is going to be blank for what we're stocking. However, if you wanted a Bryant signature on your indoor unit or a carrier signature, we can provide that. It's something that we'd have to order, though. It's not going to be something we have in stock locally. Okay. So to summarize, it's one system for Medea, Carrier, and Bryant. The outdoor unit, you can change the badges on them. The indoor unit, if you wanted it to be branded instead of blank, you would need to pre-order it in advance that way. Correct. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right, the mid-tier, our performance series. Um, this is gonna be your best bang for your buck in our market um, because the cost versus the performance is, is, is right there. So um, this tier, you get more than just a high wall. As you can see from the pictures here, you can, it's offered in a cassette a floor or ceiling mounted console and ducted unit. Um, this is the slim line ducted. You do not get a lot of external static on it, so it's not your normal residential ducted unit. Um, but all of these options are available in tiers up to three tons. Um, standard base pan heater on all of the outdoor units. The heating and cooling operation for heating at minus 22, you're only going to get 69, 70% performance. Okay, so it's something that you need to be aware of when you're selecting and designing these units. Um, on the cooling side, you're only going to get 100% cooling down to minus 13. So it can be used for a server room application. However, when you get that polar vortex, you may have some trouble cooling enough down to minus 22 or even further with this product. So um, not the best for server rooms, just kind of depends on your application. The biggest thing with ductless, I'm sorry, went too fast there, um, is for designing and selecting equipment, you need to know your load, okay? Um, because line length and outdoor air temperature affect the performance of your unit. Knowing that load and selecting your unit correctly is very important, right? So for instance, with this heating down to minus 22, we're only getting 70%. If I have a one ton heating load, I may need to put one and a half ton unit in there to satisfy that down to minus 22, right? So if you know your load, we have software where we can enter in outdoor air requirements, line length, everything that we need to tell you the exact performance you're gonna get to guarantee that you're gonna get something that's gonna perform correctly. Um, the last thing we want is to supply a ductless unit where the customer is gonna say it's not gonna heat when it's really cold out. Um, that is a misnomer in our market and um, it's not something that needs to happen as long as we're doing our due diligence and applying it correctly. And we are happy to help you with that. Um, entry level tier, the comfort tier, only available in the high wall. Um, we offer this as a cooling only unit in addition to heat pump. For our infinity and performance, the high and mid tier, we are only offering the heat pump option simply because the cost difference is not really there. Um, the reason we offer the cooling only unit on the comfort series is that the heating performance on this unit um, at low outdoor temperatures is not very high. Okay, so you're only gonna get 100% heating capacity out of this unit, I believe down to 10 degrees, and then it's gonna significantly derate below that. Um, so that is not something that you would wanna use as the full heat source in a space in our market. However, if you have auxiliary heat, like baseboard, radiant, something along those lines, um, this is a great application at a low cost for you. So one of the things that Carrier has done, or Carrier Bryant and Mydea have done with this entry level and the high tier high wall unit is they've redesigned a few features into it that help on the installation and service side. So the first option that you'll see is this mounting frame. Um, this mounting frame has two little kickstands on it to extend the unit off of the wall. And with those kickstands, essentially one person can hang the, out, the high wall unit 
onto the wall, take those kickstands out, and connect the refrigerant piping by themselves. Um, we have had some complaints about regular high wall units without having any support to extend the unit off the wall. You need more than one person to actually connect the refrigerant piping. This eliminates that. The second redesign that you'll see is the cover coming out and this chassis. So they redesigned how the cover flips up and it gives you a lot more extra space. So with that space, the electrical connections are easier to connect. Also that entire fan blower can pull directly out. So it's a couple screws and you can slide that whole thing out to replace it, to maintain it. And if you want to get to the DX coil to clean it, you can do that as well all standard on the entry and high tier unit. And then the final thing they did was rather than having to flip the cover up, like you'll see in this picture here to access the filter, the filter can actually be accessed from the top and it can just slide out. So you do not have to worry about flipping it up um, to access it if the homeowner wants to clean it. They don't have to get involved with any of the electrical connections or anything within the unit. Hey Sal, we have a couple that, questions if that's okay. Yeah, hit me. All right, so you may have answered this, but maybe it needs clarification. So Douglas asks, earlier you had indicated 75% of rated heat capacity is available at negative 22 degrees. Is that 75% of the rated capacity that would have happened at 47? That's so he's asking if the capacity rating that is published is the 47 degree rating, and then at minus 22, you're getting 75% of that. Or are you getting 75% of the minus of the 17 degree rating? You're getting you're getting you're gonna get 75% of the rating of the unit. So that rating being 9,000, 12,000, 18,000, or 24,000 of the actual AHR rating of the unit. Okay. And then the AHR rating so at, at seven degrees. So yes to his question. Got it. Yes. All right, the other one, it may be more generic, but I'll ask anyway, what's the software for load calculation? I'm assuming we don't have a specific software that we use from the ductless side, because the load's a load. Um, so generically, um, a lot of our dealers use WriteSoft. Um, some of our folks use a tool we call Gizmo, although it has several other names. I think we're doing a webinar on that one next week, but you can use any load calc software that you prefer. Um, it doesn't really matter. I mean, the, the inputs you put into the software are more important than the software itself. Correct, and our software is not gonna run a load for you. You're gonna tell us our load and we're gonna tell you what size equipment to use to ensure that it's gonna meet the load. We're all caught up on questions for now. Okay, awesome. Okay, so when you're getting above three tons and you have an application that needs a ductless unit, we do have that as well. We call it our light commercial single zone. Um, you'll see we do not have a high wall for these sizes, but we do have cassettes, um, some high static ducted, standard ducted, and the floor ceiling council. Um, you get a little bit more line length, and we'll talk about line length as well um, towards the end. Um, however, this is the performance series so your cooling operation is only down to minus 13, and then your heating operation is that down to 70% capacity at minus 22. Um, so just be aware of it when designing. Um, you, know, you need to take that into account. And now let's get in the multi-zone. So your multi-zone, a little bit different than VRF um, City Multi. Um, we have the ability with our multi-zone to use any of our indoor unit tiers with our outdoor unit okay so if i have someone who wants to put a high tier in the master bedroom but they want a entry level tier in the rest of the zones you have the ability to do that and you still get the most of the features from the high tier with the occupancy sensor and the relative humidity sensor and the wi-fi um, so you can mix and match different tiers you can mix and match different types of units high walls, cassettes, floor councils, ducted. You have a lot of flexibility on what you want to install. Um, every unit, indoor unit in this multi-zone up to five tons is connected to the outdoor unit directly. So there's no branch selector. It's not a daisy chain type pipe connection. It is all home run to the unit, okay? Um, 
At the outdoor unit where you have all your connections, there are master service valves. So when you're charging your indoor units or your refrigerant piping for this system, you can charge it all at once. You do not have to charge each line individually. You can total up the charge for the system and you can throw it all in at one time and then test your operation and do your startup. So there is some time saving there um, when you're installing this. Um, as you can see with the piping line lengths at the bottom here, you are limited with this product line. Um, this is more meant for a residential type multi-zone application. Not saying it can't be used commercially, but if you have a requirement for longer line lengths, we do have another product which we'll talk about um, that can meet those requirements. So we call this our ductless multi-zone. For our longer line length requirements, we're gonna call that our VRF multi-zone, which we'll talk about towards the end here. Okay. Hey Sal, before we go into the controls, can we, I've got one more question from earlier. I think we are probably on the comfort entry level product when Shane asked this. Is there more space for the condensate pump inside the back of the unit? Unfortunately, there is no space to actually locate the condensate pump in the indoor high wall units. So it's gonna to have to be mounted somewhere else. There's not a location for it. Thank you. Okay. We talked about Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi option is standard on Infinity, and it's an accessory for the performance and for the comfort and for the light commercial and for the multi-zone. So any of the tiers can get Wi-Fi, um, just may need to be accessory. However, if someone wants to use a Wi-Fi thermostat, like an Ecobee or a Nest, we have that ability with our ductless units, both on single zone and both on multi-zone. So one thing to note, guys, when you're talking about these 24 volt controller interfaces and ductless, you want to ensure that you're not going to lose the inverter capacity and control by switching to a 24 volt thermostat, okay? There are vendors out there that are providing these 24 volt control interfaces with their ductless units, and they're taking a inverter compressor that can modulate, and they're making it a two-stage compressor. So you're gonna lose your efficiency by doing that. With our product and the 24 volt control interface, you get full inverter capacity control through a regular single-stage thermostat, okay? Um, and we can go into the details on how it all works, if required, but really the thing to remember is you're not losing any control, any efficiency, um, it's all, similar to like you would be using the handheld remote. Um, when you're choosing your thermostat for this 24 volt controller, you do not need a heat pump thermostat. You want a regular one stage heat, one stage cool thermostat with this operation. Um, also, if you have some auxiliary heat, whether it's a radiant ceiling panel or some baseboard radiant, um, whatever it is, um, this is what you want to use to control it because you can throw a two stage heat thermostat on there and you can use your auxiliary heat as either first or second stage from the thermostat operation, okay? This is available on all of the tiers as well, including the multi-zone. So if you have a multi-zone application, they want to use their Wi-Fi thermostats, you have the ability to do that. You need to include one of these 24 volt control interfaces per indoor unit when designing. Okay, multifamily. Um, anyone familiar with this multifamily fan coil? You'll see it a lot in a closet with a hot water heater right below it. Um, and you'll return into the closet and you'll duct off of that to a room or two, um, or maybe three. Um, but with this fan coil, you do have the ability to connect it to ductless. Okay, now you have a ducted indoor unit, right? So it's not necessarily a ductless system, but we still call it ductless because of the outdoor unit. Um, you know, in the past, most of the applications of ductless are, you know, spot cooling and heating locations, problem spots, garages, man cave, that type of application. Um, what you're going to see is this inverter ductless outdoor unit product is going to be coming to standard residential applications which is why we're heavily promoting it and, and training on it because it's gonna be coming to what you'll see in the next slide, two furnaces. Um, and when it's there in our market, 
it is, we think it's going to be a game changer. Um, so if you have a multifamily application where you have a fan coil, we have the ability to do that. You do need the 24 volt control interface, um, but essentially you can tie this unit to your outdoor unit and get the inverter capacity control efficiency. Right. So we do not have it currently. However, it is currently being tested to tie in a, a coil on top of a furnace to an outdoor ductless unit, okay? And once that happens, and once it's AHR rated and available, then the testing will begin for tying in an A coil to an outdoor unit that can do multi-zone, or you can tie in high wall units or cassettes in addition to that. So if you have a house that always has a problem zone, a problem area, whether it's from bad duct design or bad airflow, whatever it is, rather than having to you know, tear up drywall to get into the ductwork and add an extension, you can actually tap in a high wall unit off of the outdoor to this. So this will be the future of ductless. Um, so it's something where you really want to learn the technology as soon as you can. And we are offering training classes once the quarantine is lifted um, to really get you trained on it. So for the ACOIL, you, you will have that ability. We're hoping by the end of the year, we don't have a formal date on it as of yet. But for fan coils or air handlers where you're not using gas heat, um, we have that ability now. We have AHR ratings with the FV4C fan coil um, made by Carrier. Um, and we can also tie it into a, a number of fan coils and air handlers. It's just, um, not all of them are currently rated. So the ratings will be coming um, as we go down the road. So something to be aware of when you're doing this, whether it's with the multifamily or this FV4C vertical type fan coil, you do need to cut off the TXD that comes factor installed on this DX coil um, because your expansion valve is actually on your outdoor unit with ductless. Okay, so again, normally, Ductless is being installed in server rooms, man caves, garages, spot area, problem spot areas and homes. Um, or in our market, if you have hot water heating and no cooling, ductless is a great option, especially the multi-zone, but it's going to be coming to regular houses soon. Um, the, the lower profile outdoor unit with the inverter and the higher efficiencies is a, really a no brainer. So. Um, do be aware of it. It is coming and we will help you with design training, all of it. We got a few questions, Sal, if that's okay. Yep. One of them was on the last slide you were just on, so I'll ask that one first. Uh, John asks, will the would the A coil be vertical and horizontal as well? Um it's not available in it yet, so I can't tell you exactly. Um, I would guess that it's going to be both, but I do not know yet. I, I, I think they're just starting with vertical at this point. So, All right. John also asks, uh, for light commercial pro projects, can you integrate any of these with a fresh air intake duct? Um, yes. So all of the indoor units, um, the ducted would be relatively easy. Um, you know, you can just tie into the duct, but with the cassette, and I, I'm not sure on the floor council, but there is a cutoff, a cutout in this cassette where you can tie in outdoor air to it. However, the outdoor air needs to be treated. So you cannot tie in, you know, a, a duct directly outside for commercial. It needs to be tied to some sort of energy recovery ventilator or a DOAS makeup air type unit because you take minus 22 degree air, even if it's a small percentage going into that unit, um, your performance is significantly going to derate and it's not going to operate correctly. So yes, ventilation can be connected to the light commercial. It just needs to be treated before it actually gets pulled through the unit. On that note, John also asks if uh, if the software, I assume he means the selection software, can handle the load calc of the fresh air intake. I'm assuming if he's asking if the selection software is asking for two different input data, but based on what you just said, that the air has to be pre-treated, I'm guessing it does not. Correct. No, unfortunately, we, we may be able to see if, if we could get some performance, but um, essentially what, what Carrier, my dear Brian, is going to say 
is we're not allowing any air that's not treated to come into these units. You're going to avoid your warranty doing that. Right. Um, so even if we could get a rating for you and derate it, you know, it's not an option of how you want to handle it. All right. Next question, also from John. Uh, is the system single phase? Can it work with 283 phase? He didn't say which system, but I'm guessing he's just saying in general. So all, all of the product that we've talked about so far is only single phase, 208 single phase. Um, no options on these products for three phase. However, we do have a three phase option we'll, we'll mention towards the end here. All right, I got one from Rod and I'm going to try to read it, but it's gonna be like reading alphabet soup. What is the difference between a KSAIC 0201230 and the KSAIC 301230? So 201 versus 301 looks like the only difference in the model numbers. Um, we'll talk about that towards the end when we cover the uh, cheat sheet. Um, we'll have those part numbers listed and what they are and discuss the differences. Okay. So hold off on that one. All right. Uh, Marlon asks, will the indoor unit still have its power supply and communication from the outdoor unit, or will it need its own indoor power source? So everything that we've covered so far, including the multi-zone, um, the indoor unit is powered off of the outdoor unit. Um, when we talk about the, the VRF product in a little bit, then you're going to have dedicated power sources for each of the indoor units. Good question. All right, thanks. I think we're caught up on questions for now. Awesome. Okay, single phase VRF and three phase VRF. So this product has the ability to go um, both ways um, in these tonnages. Um, so the heat pump single phase VRF is gonna operate similar to all of the ductless we talked about previously. Um, however, it has longer line lengths and the possibility of more indoor units, right? So with the, the heat pump single phase, you get three or four or five tons. You can do up to nine indoor units and up to 492 total feet of piping. Whereas with the previous series, you can only do up to a maximum of five indoor units and your line length, I believe, is under 300 feet. Um, however, with both of those products, being a heat pump, you can only do heating or cooling, right, at one time. So if I have nine zones and eight of them want heating and one wants cooling, my system's going to heat until it satisfies those eight, and then there's a majority that wants cooling, and then it will switch from heat mode to cooling mode. That's what we call heat pump operation. Um, however, with VRF, we have the ability to do what's called heat recovery. And heat recovery means I can actually do simultaneous heating and cooling, right? So I can have my eight zones that want heating get heating. My outdoor unit will be in heating. And that cooling rejection that it's taking out of the space, right, can be directed towards the one zone that needs cooling, and it can actually cool the space there. So that, that's what we call heat recovery. It's kind of your uh, most um, comfort-oriented option right where you can do if it's zero degrees outside and i'm having a party and i have 50 people in one room in my house um i can actually cool that room right where the rest of my house can be heated okay so that heat recovery is only available single phase in a six ton or a 12 ton um, but as you'll see you can do 12 indoor units or 25 indoor units for six or 12 ton um, and you can actually do up to 3200 feet of pipe with that system okay so when you switch to the heat recovery, that's when you're going to have the branch selector type controller. So you'll actually have an additional piece um, inside the house that's going to choose if you want heating or cooling. Um, but for larger end homes, um, this is a great option. You know, if you want to give your customer essentially whatever control they want, heating or cooling at whatever temperature outside they want. Um, so that heat recovery and heat pump product is also available in three phase up to, I believe it's 30 or 40 tons now. Um, and then you can get additional modules for different systems and split it up. So um, that's essentially what we call VRF, right? This product where you're doing longer line lengths, more indoor units, um, you know, higher tiered outdoor units. Um, we call VRF where the previous, everything we saw before this, we called ductless. 
make sense? Is there questions, Ryan? Uh, we don't have any new questions right now. Oh, cool. Okay. Everybody's a slow typer, probably. That's okay. We can always come back. Okay. So, summing up what we've covered, um, big highlights, 42 SEER, right? You can sell the most efficient air conditioner available, right? Um, and performance are the big ones. Heating and cooling operation and ratings, we will give you down to minus 22 with our equipment, right? So we will ensure from our part when selecting the equipment, if you do the load calc correctly, we will give you a unit that's gonna make sure that in our market, it's gonna heat correctly and it will cool correctly and control your customer space. Okay, I wanna show you guys a cheat sheet that we have. Um, and this cheat sheet, essentially, it's kind of an eye, an eye chart here for you, but. Um, this is a two-sided sheet we can get in your hands, but essentially it has all the different tiers listed with the model numbers, the capacities, efficiencies. It gives you your line set size. It gives you your minimum and maximum line lengths. It gives you your charging requirements, so how much additional feet and ounces you need to charge correctly, and it gives you your electrical rating. Okay, so this is a great cheat sheet when you're designing or budgeting a system. Um, you have all of this information available to you very quickly, so it's very helpful. Um, one of the other things too is, if any of the product we just discussed, if registered, sorry, any of the ductless product we just discussed, if registered with Carrier Bryant Idea, you get a 10-year parts warranty, okay? Otherwise, it's a five-year warranty only. Okay, so this is all of our single zone systems. And Ryan, can you go back to the alphabet soup and tell me what part numbers the customer had a question on? Yes, uh, so it was KSAIC zero, and then 201-230 versus 301-230. 201-230 versus 301-230. And it's not on the chart, so I might be—I might not—I must not be showing you guys the correct chart here. Um, let me see if I can pull one up. I think I believe it's just a, a tier change, so they—they they did a redesign. So I believe the 301 230 is what you want. Um, but let me just show you very quickly. Sorry, I'm going to the wrong place. See if it's on this updated sheet that I have here. Yeah, several other people are typing in that it's a, a series update change to the kit. Correct, yes. Yeah, I don't have it on here as well. But um, if you guys saw in the PowerPoint when we had, it says generation two, um, the previous version that you're talking about, even though it says it's a two to three digit change, it's a generation one to generation two change for the 24 volt interface. So the three is what you want, um, I guess is the bottom line there. Uh, we have a few more questions since we're at a pause point here. Uh, okay. John asks if Chicago still requires flare connections to be removed. Yes, I've been told that that's going into, uh, they're relooking at that code, but yes, Chicago does require the flare fittings to be removed. Uh, people, some people have requests for like the, uh, copies of the cheat sheet and some of the stuff like that. So uh, Sal will get a report with all your guys' emails information on it, as well as these requests. So we can send that stuff to you guys uh, tomorrow or something like that. Of course, he, he, would, he didn't know that until I just said he was gonna do it. So I guess now he's stuck doing it, but. I'd be happy to do it, no problem. <laughs> um, the, the second sheet of the, the cheat sheet is all about multi-zone. Um, so it gives you some general information, including your ports, how many units you can connect, min and max line length. Um, but here is where you can actually see the different combinations of indoor units you can connect with outdoor units. And this is something that gets commonly overlooked in that you do have the ability to kind of oversize your indoor units with your outdoor unit. So this 24 um, size outdoor unit is a two ton, but you can actually put an 18 and an 18 indoor on it. Um, and essentially, you're just going to be losing that capacity when both units are running full blast at the same time, right? 
um, which we can give you the exact performance on that as well with our software. But you do have a lot of flexibility if it's not a critical location um, where you can actually upsize your indoors to get a little bit more out of it. Um, one thing with inverter technology is that um, a lot of times these units can put out a lot of capacity. They can actually run those compressors um, a little bit faster than 60 hertz. So um, at regular temperatures or non-extreme temperatures, you'll actually get a little bit more capacity than what the rating is. Um, it's just rated at 60 hertz per AHRI, um, so they can't ramp it any faster, but it's pretty commonplace to ramp these inverter compressors faster than that. So. Um, this is a great way to double check what you want to do for your multi-zone design. Um, you know, showing you the different options of indoors you can mix and match the different tiers and the different sizes per outdoor unit. So again, it's, this is a great sheet for all of you to have and we're happy to share it with all of you. Other than that, um, do we have any other questions? Uh, we don't have any new questions now other than people uh, asking for a copy of the cheat sheets. Uh, maybe what we'll just do is uh, just send it to everybody. That way you don't have to all keep typing in that you want it. We'll just send it to everybody, uh, whatever email you registered at. Anybody else have any other questions you want to interrogate Sal with? We'll give Anyone them. interested in more info too, um, you know, once the quarantine is lifted, we're happy to set up meetings or any further details and, and training whether it's installation, service, sales, whatever you guys need, we are more than happy to help, so. All right, we do have a question uh, from Jay. Can you use Performance Council with Comfort Outdoor? No. The only tier mix and matching is on the multi-zone systems. So if I wanted to try to save some some money and say I don't need your the heating capacity out of my outdoor unit, I cannot take this comfort outdoor and tie it to a performance indoor or an infinity indoor. The single zones all have to be same tier matches. Multi zones, you have the ability to mix and match. Uh, Shane asks, are base pan heaters available for the older units? I don't even know. I don't know that either, to be honest with you. Um, I would think so, but I'll have to check on that one. Shane, if you have a specific one in mind, uh, send Sal a note with like the model number of the one you're trying to solve a problem on. Uh, we can look that one up because the answer may be different based on the models and vintages. Um, Paul asks, does dry mode increase energy consumption? Um, I guess it depends on how you're asking that, right? So if, if I'm not running dry mode altogether and I'm just controlling to temperature, then I'm not going to be running my compressor as much. So I would think you're going to be increasing your your sorry your energy usage, um, but your comfort is going to be addressed um, a little bit better, and you know you may get some savings on compressor run just the customer feeling better um, and maybe raising their set point a little bit on the temperature side, but running a dry mode is, is running your compressor more than a normal thermostat operation would. Right, but I would kind of agree with what you're saying. You're, you're only running it more when you need to do the dehumidification as opposed to some people just putting a lower set point in and running it more all the time. So depending on the behavior, it could go either way, I think. Uh, Amy asks if there's any uh, examples of some projects where, where these were installed. I'm assuming she was referring more to the to the VRF systems uh, versus the standard ductless, which are installed everywhere. But Yeah, we have a number of locations that we can bring you out to, um, both ductless and VRF. We also have both ductless and VRF installed in our lab in Melrose Park. Um, so when we do classes on either of them, we're out and looking at um, these units and going through them, um, how to install them, how to service them, all of that. So again, please feel free to reach out if there's any interest in seeing job sites or getting some on hands, hands on training in our lab. As a follow up to her question, she was actually talking about ductless stuff and more specifically not projects, but uh, can they be used in garages, four season rooms, 
uh, like what are some of the applications that residentially you might use these in? Sure. Um, definitely garages, four season rooms, um, additions, you know, that room above the garage, if they built that out. Um, Attic conversions are common requests. Yep. Um, even problem spots in homes, right? I mean, if, if it's really a problem area, you could actually put in an eye wall directly to it. Um, but it's really about increasing the comfort. When you're looking at a home that has a furnace, right? And with ductwork, it's hard to replace that whole system with a ductless unit. Um, so it's really asking the questions of where are you uncomfortable? Where are there problems in the space? Or are you looking at doing any additions or build outs or anything like that? That's where um, ductless is a, is a very good sell. Um, to really increase the comfort for the customer in an efficient way. Um, and then, especially in Chicago, older homes that do not have cooling and that have boilers um, are very good sells because, you you know, usually those homes are higher end inside and it's hard to, you know, you'd have to do a significant remodel to get ductwork in there. Whereas when you're just trying to hide refrigerant pipe, um, it's a lot easier to do. Uh, Phil has a question about a clarification on the 24 volt thermostat kit. He asks if we lose inverter stages when we use a third party stat. Nope. Any R C G Y W stat will function. So the, the way that it works is essentially there's a duct sensor or a little button sensor for the high wall that gets tied in from this to the high wall or in, you know, fan coil unit. So that it knows what the supplier temperature is so that once you call for heating or cooling it can modulate to maintain the correct supplier temperature that you need um, based on that call and how long it's been for and all of that um, yeah i think you might have got confused because i think at one point you mentioned some competitor models do lose stages so i think that's maybe where the correct in there correct so with our 24 volt controller and our product you get full inverter control there are some other manufacturers that are selling a 24 volt control interface for regular thermostat controls. And some of them are changing their unit into a single stage cooling heating unit. Some of them are turning it into a two stage heating cooling unit where ours is full modulation inverter. Well, while we're on this screen, uh, there's a question on the 24 volt thermostat kit. Where does that physically get located? Uh, it depends, it is outdoor rated so you can mount it on the wall outside by the outdoor unit. Um, as you'll see, there are wire connections that need to go from it to indoor, outdoor, and thermostat. Um, so it can be located, you know, above the ceiling or behind the wall or, you know, in a closet somewhere as well inside, um, or it can be mounted outside by the outdoor unit. Kind of whatever's easiest for you, for some flexibility. Um, Julio asks if uh, we will let them know when installation and troubleshooting classes become available. Uh, Julio, everybody that's on this webinar and all the other webinars this week and next week, I'm adding you guys to our training mailing list. So every Friday you get a list of all the stuff coming up for the next, next several weeks. So once those classes are clear to be, ple clear to be done again uh, in the classroom and lab, uh, you will see those on the Friday emails. Uh, Ryan asks, uh, Chicago requires pressure relief on VRF uh, refrigerant lines. Can we order these factory installed or do we have to remove the refrigerant and install? Um, the, you would have to remove it yourself or we could ship it to someone to remove it for you and then add the valves and send it to you um, but it, or do it on site for you. But it's unfortunately, it's not a factory installed option. The problem with that is Chicago is the only place in the world that has that requirement. So I'm trying to convince carrier Brian Maidea to, to start adding those um, is very difficult when we're the only people in the whole world who need them. I know there are some other local competitors that say they'll do it factory installed, but what they actually do is they send it to a mechanical contractor over by my house and those guys install it and send it back to them. <laughs> so it's, it's still the same thing. Uh, they just say that they're doing it at the factory, but they don't, um, they sub it out. Uh, Joe has a question for a four zone system. Is it better to have liquid and suction mains with Y fittings for each unit 
or have the mains run to a BDU branch distribution unit, I'm assuming, uh, to each unit, indoor unit from there. I'm assuming he's talking about VRF, obviously. Yeah, so so this depends on how much line length you you really need. Um, so because with our with our ductless multi zone, you do not need Y branches or a branch selector. Um, everything is home run back to the outdoor unit. So there's five taps on the outdoor, five or four taps, however many you had that can tie into this. Um, so either if you have high, I, I would I would go this route purely because it's more economical, right? It's not as built up so that you know it's it's a, at a better price point for a four ton system. However, um, if you if it's easier installation wise to use the Y joints or the branch selector, um, you have that ability with the single phase VRF as well. Um, so it's just going to be a little bit more expensive because it's a, a higher tiered unit essentially. And I will add, we also uh, there's multiple VRF lines that we have. If you haven't gotten the gist of that uh, through Sal's presentation, this one right here on the screen is the single phase VRF. We have other VRF systems as well that so we can do it either way. We can we have systems that'll do branch controllers, we have systems that'll do Y fittings, and we have systems that'll do home running back to the piping. So depending on the layout. In in the past, it's been logical. Like if you have just picture a school with a long hallway, if you're putting the condensing units at the far end of the hallway and you're running the refrigerant lines all the way down the middle of the hallway, it'd be a lot better to have one main refrigerant line and then Y off. But if you have more square shaped building having things go into a branch controller might make more sense. The building may dictate which, which is easier for you to, or less expensive for you to pipe as well. Um, we have one here from Pete. Um, you've talked about running ductless systems in four season insulated rooms and having the correct load calculated before sizing, but is there any application to run in a three season room, a pool room, deck room, or other part, partially insulated rooms? Um, okay, so I guess the, the biggest worry that I would have with any of those partially insulated rooms are essentially how much humidity you're exposed to, especially for a pool room and, and chemicals, um, but also, I mean, you, you really need to, to do the load count correctly. So like for a garage, right, you can, you can design a, a ductless system to heat and cool a garage, but if the garage door is open, you know, all bets are essentially off unless you can tell us the exact load you're going to have at what outdoor temperatures you have there, right? So um, you, I would for sure stay away from pool rooms, especially because of the chemicals that's going to beat up the coil and components in those units. They're not designed for that. Um, but any other system where you're going to have some more exposure than a normal indoor, you know, home, um, it's really about what the customer's expectations are and, and what we can offer with you know, how they're going to use that room. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I'll also add from an energy code standpoint, both residentially and commercially, you're not allowed to heat and cool partially insulated or partially air sealed buildings and rooms. Um, you, it's either It's either in the house or it's out of the house. There's no in between as far as the code is concerned. So technically, if you're going to add one of these systems to some kind of three season room, that three season room if you're adding cooling for the first time, that three season room would have to be sealed and insulated. If you're changing out a unit, you wouldn't have to do anything. But if you're adding it, technically you would. So I say that knowing that no one's going to do that in a three season room, but just throwing it out there. Um, Roman asked a question that I don't know if you can even answer. Um, he's asking why there's no VRF in commercial refrigeration. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that, Roman. If you're asking why there's no variable speed compressors or why there's no variable refrigerant flowing, um, we don't do any commercial refrigeration at our office, but some of the products that I've seen, they do use variable refrigerant flow in some of the supermarket type applications. But I'm not, I'm assuming Sal's not either up to speed on all that that stuff. Unless Sal has a different. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, I think it'd be cool if you could put an outdoor unit on a system that can do your refrigerator and your space heating and cooling, but that's not anything that's available at this point. Or, and we have no idea if it will ever be. Uh, Amy asks, um, when sizing ductless for the Chicago market, asking if we should size for cooling or for heating, one of them is going to end up being oversized versus the other. 
you're definitely going to size for heating. And with with the inverter technology, the, the oversizing, you do have a lot of flexibility, flexibility there. Um, not saying, you know, if you have a one ton load, putting a two ton on is a good idea. Um, but you definitely want to size for heat in our market, assuming that you need heat and you don't have auxiliary. Um, but with that inverter technology, sizing one above what your design load is at minus 22, um, to get that heating performance is, is not an issue. Yeah, and I think you hit it, on, hit it on there too. It does depend on if you have other heat sources available or if this is your primary heat. If it's your primary heat, obviously it's got to do all the work. If you have other heat sources available, then you can, you can make a choice there. Um, any more questions anybody else wants to send in or are we wrapped up? I'll give you guys like one more minute. As soon as I said that, Joe typed a question in. Uh, what is the main distinction between VRF and ductless? Would a ductless system that can run heat in the winter be considered VRF? Uh, for, from, okay, so a ductless system, so ductless and VRF are essentially our terminology for the different products. Um, with an inverter compressor, you're varying the refrigerant flow to the indoor and outdoor units, right? Uh, or sorry, from the outdoor to the indoor units. So technically, the ductless product that we covered is variable refrigerant flow. Um, our, our distinction is the ductless is under five tons, and it is for multi-zoned, all home run back, so no branch selectors, no Y joints. Um, and then VRF for us is our higher tier where you're doing more potential indoor units, longer line lengths, options for branch selectors, options for Y joints, and options for heat recovery. So there really are terminology. The technology is very similar, um, but the VRF is more commercial and a higher tier with more options. I'd also add that the, the ductless word also makes things confusing because the ductless manufacturer, manufacturers now make ducted indoor units. So you have ducted ductless systems, which makes it baffling to me, but ductless doesn't always mean there's no ducts. Correct. Uh, there was some questions about uh, what type of compressors, uh, scroll versus uh, rotary, that are in the VRF units. Um, so for the heat pump, they are scrolls. For the heat recovery, they are rotaries. For all of the ductless, they're scrolls as well. All right, so I think we are all caught up on questions, uh, so I'm going to stop the recording and cut everybody loose. We thank you guys for your time, and if you have any other additional questions, uh, send them over to us, and we will get out the cheat sheet stuff to everybody that was on the call. Thanks, guys.